what must be in place for a Christian youth before thinking about finding a marriage partner? And what steps should one take to find the right partner? Amen. What must be in place? I think the very first thing in place should be a vision. Before a brother thinks about bringing a sister into their life, before you think about bringing a sister into your life, you need to ask yourself, what is the vision of my life? Why am I on earth? What does God want me to accomplish with my life? The Bible says that without a vision, the people cast off restraints. Hallelujah. Restraints, self-discipline, comes with revelation, comes with a vision. Proverbs 29, verse 18. Where there is no vision, revelation, the people cast off restraints. And uh, when you are using the New King James Version, some Bibles give an explanation there that the revelation here talks about has to do with a prophetic vision. Where there is no prophetic vision, the people cast off restraints. But happy is he who keeps the law. Amen. When people accept no divine guidance, okay, when people do not welcome divine guidance from the Lord, they run wild. They fail to be self-disciplined. Amplified Bible says, Proverbs 29, verse 11, where there is no vision, no redemptive revelation of God, the people perish. But he who keeps the law of God, which includes that of man, blessed, happy, fortunate, and enviable is he. Where there is no vision, marriages perish. Many people are marrying spouses because of convenience. Many people are marrying spouses because of what they can get from them. Many people are marrying spouses because of the beauty. Hallelujah. Sorry, my office kind of has an echo. I don't know whether it's not affecting you. Glory to Jesus. If you marry a beautiful girl because of her beauty, okay, when you have no vision in place, it means that you are heading for trouble because you are going to perish. And many people have perished in the battle of the perishing of their marriages. Is somebody with me? Marriage is God's idea. Marriage is God's vision. So the moment we try to do marriage, when we don't have a clear vision, a clear prophetic vision that we are pursuing in life, we are at a risk of crashing in those marriages. So what does a brother need to put in place? A Christian brother, before thinking about finding a marriage partner, first know your vision, first draft your vision, first have a clear direction of your life. Where are you headed? Where do you see yourself in the next 10 years? Where do you see yourself in the next 50 years? How, what rest do you have to run? Because uh, a partner, a marriage partner, is a helpmate. The Bible says that when God saw Adam, he saw that it was not good that he be alone because he had a lot of business to transact. Hallelujah. And he said, I am going to make a suitable helpmate for this guy. Hallelujah. Genesis 2, verse 18. And the Lord God said, it is not good that man should be alone. I will make him a helper comparable to him. A helper suitable for him. A helper who can partner with him to fulfill what he is supposed to do. Hallelujah. New Living Translation says, Then the Lord God said, It is not good for the man to be alone. I will make a helper who is just right for him. Now, child of God, young man, before, before, you are right with God. There is no right girl for you. Hallelujah. There is not helper 
who is right for you when you are not yet right, walking right with God. Amen. In fact, before you even know the vision of your life as a man, you need to be right with God. You need to be a child of God. You need to be born again genuinely. You need to be full of the Holy Spirit. You need to be following the voice of the Holy Spirit. You need to be walking right with God. And when you're walking right with God, he will unleash his vision for your life to you. He will reveal to you the plan he has for you. And when you are in that plan, when you are executing and pursuing the vision of God for your life, that is when God will identify. That is when God will connect you with the helper who is just right for you. Can you imagine? You are called to be a prophet of God like me, and you marry a businesswoman. You are called to be a minister of God in the nation, and you marry a woman who believes that she is called to trade in, uh, in kauri shells. <laughs> Hallelujah, hallelujah. Is somebody with me? Glory to Jesus. Glory to God. Yes, we can. This is a big deal. You need to walk right with God, first and foremost. Put in place a clear standard of intimacy with the Holy Spirit before you seek for his spouse. When you are not yet right with God, any spouse you meet, any beautiful girl you meet, any handsome guy you meet is good for marriage, but not right for you. Not every good thing is right. You need a helper who is just right for you. And they can only, you can only identify them when you are walking right with God. Let me try to go to the second part of the question. That is helpful. Glory to Jesus. I hope that is helpful. So in place, the most important thing is not, by the way, a bungalow, okay? The most important thing is not a plot of land. The most important thing is not having a car. It's not having a six by six bed. Those are minors. Those are minors. Many people will tell you about those. Have a big bed, have a big house, have a job. There are, there are people we have seen who have married with good jobs and good businesses. And the jobs have crashed, the businesses have crashed, and they've come back to zero. And because they received a spouse who, was, uh, who accepted them at the anointing of money, at the anointing of a great business, when it crashes, the marriage is crashed. Hello? But when you have a vision, when you have a vision, a vision does not crash. A vision attracts God's provision and promotion. Hallelujah. Dear my sister, my daughter, don't marry man because of the money he has. Marry man because of the vision that he is pursuing. Because you are called by God to help him in that vision that God has given him. That is on the side of guys. That is on the side of guys. Have a vision. Now, ladies, ladies, what you need in place before you think about finding a marriage partner, before you think about saying yes, is that you must cultivate a heart and an attitude of submission. The reason we have many problems in marriages is that women want to marry, okay? Is that women want to marry men and be in charge of their lives. My daughter, if you are marrying a man to control and to lead, there are very few chances of survival for your marriage. That is why it is dangerous for you to, man, to marry a man who has no vision. Because you have nothing to, to support. You have nothing to do in his life. You are useless to him. And because you are useless to him, because he has no vision you are going to support, he's going to treat you as something useless. Hey. Hey. So some, listen to me, some of the Ladies who are going through rough treatment by their spouses, it is because their spouses don't know the, their purpose in their life. When you marry a man who doesn't know your purpose, your role in his life, he is going to abuse you and misuse you. I think it is uh, 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 the saint of God, Miles Munro, who said that when the purpose of something is not known, abuse is inevitable. My sister, my daughter, when a 
to know your purpose in his life, your role in his life, he will abuse you and misuse you. So don't look for a man who has money. Look for a man who knows the purpose that you have in his life, the role that you have in his life, the importance that you have in his life. Hallelujah. So, my daughter, my sister, make sure that you have learned submission before you marry. I have counseled marriage uh, uh, couples, okay? I have spoken to people, to men who are frustrated in their marriages, women who are frustrated in their marriages. I want to tell you, I want to let you know that the major problem leading to failure of marriages is when a woman is not ready to submit. And when a man has no vision that he's pursuing. Glory to Jesus. I hope somebody is getting me clear. So two things in place. On the side of a man, you need to have a clear vision and direction for your life. You need to have a clear walk with God. I usually tell young people that if there is any time you need to be in close intimacy with the Holy Spirit, it is in that time when you are seeking to make a decision on who to marry. You need to hear clearly from God. Otherwise, you can marry a knife instead of a wife. You can marry a hooligan instead of a husband. Hallelujah. When you are not walking right with God, you can easily marry a hooligan instead of a husband. You can marry a knife that will cut you instead of a wife that will help you. Amen. Wow. What steps should one take to find the right partner? I want to imagine that by what I've shared, the things that you need in place, when you have those things in place, a clear vision, and you are serving God fervently, and you are submitting to authority, okay, then it will be easy for you to find a, a wife. It will be easy for you to find a husband. Let me tell you something. The girls who are submitted to their spiritual fathers and serving the Lord fervently, are the ones who usually get spouses, get proposed to. They are the ones whom the serious brothers are looking at. It is not the ones who are interceding and sowing seeds for their husbands that get one. It is those who are serving God fervently. Hallelujah. So while you put in place, while you position yourself and yield yourself to submission, to authority, of your spiritual father, of your daddy, of God, as a woman, the flower of your glory becomes manifested. But if you are the girl who has issues with your dad, you have issues with your pastor, you have issues with your choir leader, you have issues with your team leader, let me tell you, the boys are watching you, the guys are watching you. The people you are praying to God to give you as a husband, they are watching you and they will be very cautious Hello. In fact, I would warn brothers, if you see a girl who is unruly, who is unsubmitted, please stay away from that sister. She will be a knife in your life. It will be very hard for you as a brother, as a man, to fix a woman who is not submitted. If she cannot submit to her pastor, she will not submit to you. If she cannot submit to her dad, she cannot submit to you. If she's the one riding her mother crazy, don't think you're going to control her life. Don't be deceived. Other things are supplementary. An educated woman, it's good. Beauty, very important. But the most important thing is a heart of submission, a teachable heart and heart of submission. When that happens, my sister, in your life, just to know that you are a candidate for marriage. Sometimes we pray over things, and yet what we need to do is to work on our lives. 
and our hearts. So work on yourself. Work on your heart, my sister. Hallelujah. Work on your relationship with your parents. Work on your relationship, especially with your father. I usually tell people that a girl who has had challenges with her father, either an absentee father, an abusive father, they have not forgiven uh, their father, it will be hard for them to relate right with a man, even if they get the best man on this universe. It will be a very hard marriage or relationship. So the first step you need to take is a step of submission, is a step of being teachable, seeking deliverance, okay? Seek deliverance as a young woman, as a young man, seek deliverance. The things that killed the marriage of your mother will most likely kill your marriage if you are not transformed in your mind and delivered from every encumbrance and every connection with that. I may not explain so much about that, but deliverance is a wide thing. Some people think that the people who need deliverance are the ones who have bad dreams, the ones who have epilepsy, who are falling down and all that. Okay? No. The person who needs deliverance is a person who has gone through life, a person who has negative experiences, a person who has a foundation that is not the best. That is the person that needs deliverance. And deliverance begins with the mind. Begins with the mind. Deliverance is not about falling down. Okay? Under the anointing. Deliverance has to do with the transformation of your mind for the deliverance of your soul and the freedom of your spirit. Another day, at another opportunity, we shall talk more about deliverance in detail. But for now, I think that is what I could share in the time available about the things you need to put in place before thinking about marriage as a young, as a Christian youth and the steps thereof. What you are looking for is looking for you, but a transformed version of you. The man you are praying for is also looking for you, but he's looking for a transformed version of you. The wife you are looking for, the best one, the one who is just right for you, she's also looking for you and praying for you. But the transformed version of you. The vision of God will change your life. Submission will change your life. Thank you so much. Let me pause there for now. I love you. Can you take back your house, please? Now that you're back. Uh, thank you very much, Pastor Judith. Sorry, I had uh, a challenge with my connection, but finally back. Thank you, Pastor Ronald. Uh, that was for me. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. I think we do have just something like 12 minutes. Uh, I don't know if Pastor Massey can add on what Pastor has said, but I think it is very, very sufficient for, I don't know if something can be added. But uh, uh, Pastor, what I would like to ask you is, I heard you say that if um, for a man, if you want to be ready for marriage, I found you in the middle, there must be an established vision for your life. Uh, does that mean uh, the vision of a ministry or an organization you're working with, or everyone must have a personal vision. Okay. Let me try to give it a quick, a quick shot. Um, let me share an example of mine. When I was still at university, 2008, um, God spoke to me and he gave me direction that I was to be that was calling me to be a minister of the gospel, a teacher of the word, to be precise. So in my heart, I knew that I am a minister of God. I knew that I'm what? A minister of God. In fact, for that matter, for that reason, I told God, I cannot marry a girl with average beauty because I'll be meeting beautiful girls in my ministry, I knew I would have beautiful girls. So I knew and I told myself that I need to marry a girl that is really beautiful on top of the other things that I've talked about. 
And I knew I needed to marry a woman who is a woman of God, who understands what serving God is. I was not looking for a rich girl. I was not looking for an educated girl. I was looking for a girl who is submitted to God, a girl who loves God and who is a minister. Because I had that, an idea of what vision was ahead of me. Of course, as time went on, it has kept shaping, it has kept enlarging, it has kept growing, and it is still growing and expanding. I mean, the vision of my life. But I knew I was a minister of God. I wasn't like I'm an engineer, so I want to marry an engineer or an architect so that we have a great uh, uh, architectural firm or engineering firm. No, I was looking for a woman with whom we could serve God. So, but at that time, I had no, I didn't even know what it means to run a church. I didn't know what it means to, to have a ministry, but I knew I was to be a minister of God, at least for the start. For starters, that was a clear vision to me. And I knew that no matter where I go, no matter what I do, I am a minister of God. I'm a teacher of the word of God. Hallelujah. That is what I started with. Now about uh, how many years down the road? Okay. Several years. 15 plus years down the road. I'm in ministry. Me and my wife, we are pastoring a church. We are doing apostolic ministry to the body of Christ, to the international community. Okay. Hallelujah. And my wife is not complaining because she has an idea of the kind of man she was marrying. So the vision, you may not have a registered church, you may not have a, a sim or whatever, but you have at least a personal life purpose statement. And my life purpose statement from that time, okay, I think way from around the second year at the university, that was around 2007, my life purpose statement was to equip and empower people to experience their full potential. Hallelujah. And today, Amen. the vision of the ministry I run is around that. It has just been polished. The vision of my life today, the vision of the ministry I run, equipping and empowering people to experience their full potential in God and fulfill God's purpose for their lives through teaching them and ministering to them the word of God by the power and anointing of the Holy Spirit. That is the vision. Wow. I hope wow. my brother Timothy, you are getting at least uh, the whole idea. Thank you. I, I think uh, you have answered it very, very well. Thank you very, very much. I, I don't know, does anyone have a question for our pastor? But before we have we put forward our questions, I want us to welcome Pastor Thomas Kato to give us just a greeting in just a few minutes. Um, and then we can proceed to the questions. Pastor Kato, you're very, very welcome. Oh, thank you. I'm happy to be here, um, and I'm happy to, to, to meet all the youth. Sorry, it's quite dark. All the, all the youth right here, and I'm blessed to, to be part this evening, though I'm sorry I came late. I'm called Kato Thomas. I'm based here in Kampala, and I lead a ministry called Generation Impact Ministries and a church called Generation Impact Church. Yeah, I'm blessed to learn from you and hear from all of you. God bless you so much. So thank you so much. This is our hangout for the youth, Pastor Kato, and we hope you bless us in the times to come. Our pastors, Pastor Judith and Pastor Ronald have been guiding us with some questions. And right now the question we've been handling has been, um, what must one have in youth in place? What must the youth have in place before considering uh, marriage? And Pastor Ronald had helped us to understand a lot about it, which uh, I think I will share with you the recording, and then maybe you can also listen or share with the youth at the church. So we finish at exactly 50 minutes, that's six minutes, uh, five minutes from now. I would like to uh, invite anyone 
of us with a question for our pastor. We, we had two, two uh, topics today. That's the, our identity in Jesus and then uh, the re prerequisites for marriage. Uh, anyone with a question for our pastor before Pastor Judith can come in? Put the message in the chat. Uh, also unmute and ask. I don't see any questions. Oh, Andrew has oh. a question on how to identify a right partner. Okay, so Andrew, you have to come back for that because that's a big word. If you let go any of the pastors on the call on that, we will leave here tomorrow. <laughs> so why don't we start with Andrew's question? How to identify a right partner last, uh, like, next Friday, is that a good plan? Because I want his question to have it, uh, like someone to really answer his question because I mean, if you end up with the wrong person, you're stuck. But then I don't think you have it. I think Timothy, Timothy, mm -hmm. right. is that okay? Yeah, Just actually. <laughs> Yeah, to start actually, with his question? Yes. yes. I want Andrew, to, want can to you put talk? something. Andrew. Something Andrew funny, can... as Pastor Andrew mm -hmm. unmutes, uh -huh. something funny is that someone asks that if if everyone is looking for the right partner, who mm -hmm. is the right, wrong partner for? <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> Andrew, can you oh, hold on gosh. getting a, a, a partner until next week? <laughs> <laughs> A wrong pattern is for a wrong person. Oh my okay. god. <laughs> we will write them all and we'll make them not wrong, but uh, all right, good. <laughs> like good partners. And if, for, for, for sure, I don't think we can do, we can start a new world like that. However, we yeah. want to make sure your question is answered. So for now, just don't get anyone. Say they put me on hold and we can start here next week. But thank you, Pastor Kato. It was good to have Mercy and the Pastor Onesmus join us, though they, they, I think they dropped off, but that was good. So, oh my goodness. Pastor Ronald, please next time come early because these people stop me with all questions. And I, I need help. Um, Pastor Kato also has a burden for young people. So if, please come early next time so that you will help us answer some of these questions. Diane and uh, I don't know, Pastor Tony, someone always did. Tony Ruba Ministries. Who is that, Timothy? I think he can unmute and talk about himself, but Tony is our is one of our administrators here at church. Oh, good. Good to see you, Tony. And all the young people on the call. But he's a young man, not married. <laughs> all the unmarried yes. people. Please stay unmarried until next week. Yes. <laughs> you <And> guided. <laughs> <laughs> have you heard that? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Pastor Ronald, Pastor Kato, and we all the good people here will guide you. So stay and married. Pastor, Pastor Nesmash and Mercy, thank you for joining us today. It was good to have you. And then someone who has my name, Daphne. It's very funny to see my name. Maybe she should <laughs> pray for us today. My friend. Definitely, are you able to say hello? And since you have my name, pray for us. Are you in a quiet place? I think she's dodging. It's gone. Daphne. My name's, my name's sake, please, Deva. Nachibuka is unmuting that her network is not fine. Oh, okay, her network is not good. Okay. 
She has unmuted. She has unmuted. She is there. Pastor she Andrew, is she the right one? Oh, no, we are not seeing the right one now. Yeah. Until we next week. Until next week. One week. <laughs> Please stay, hey. please stay tuned until at least you're guided next week. But it's going to be saying something. And she talk or her network is not good. Okay. I think we're oh. oh, her network is not yeah, good. My, Andrew, my, my, I, yeah. Sefa, Andrew. It's Someone will Please pray for us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, let me pray. Dear Lord, I thank you for all these young people. Bless them abundantly, stay with them, stand with them, encourage them. Just like your word says, we young men, we young people, we are strong and the word of the Lord lives in us. It has given us power to overcome the evil one. None of the young people are here, Father God, and even the old ones. None of us, Father God, that will be overcome. None of us will lose the battle to the enemy. All of us, we are victors in the name of Jesus. Father, I pray for all of them. Let your grace abide with them, your mercy, your love, your care. Above all, bless them with joy, love, and happiness. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Thank you so much. Amen. Thank you, everyone. So we'll see you again next week. Please send your questions before time so our pastors can see them and uh, please know how best to help you. And continue praying for young people. Timothy, please. All right. Bye, everyone. Good Me night. Too. Tony, Tony, thank you for coming. Pastor Blessed Ronald. night. Blessed night, saints. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much.